All right, friends, it's lesson four, and the lesson is important enough for me to drive home again. I am going to specifically discuss in this video vector stuff that you need to know. Not that vector stuff that you did in pre-calculus, dot products, cross products, any of that stuff. I am interested in looking at particle motion as vector calculus. So there are some things that you need to know about. You need to know that when I talk about the position vector of a particle in motion, I am looking at a vector where the x coordinate is the x coordinate with the x component rather is the x coordinate and the y component is the y coordinate of a point on the curve in motion so when we think about a point on the curve we think about parentheses x comma y when we look at a vector we've got those brackets x comma y what makes this more frustrating is that some people write vectors with the round brackets these people make my life more difficult. When we talk about velocity vectors, we are talking about a vector where the first component is dx dt, and the second component is dy dt. Speed, Hopefully this is all stuff we've driven home with ourselves. I'll tell you what. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. In the same way that in one-dimensional motion, speed was the absolute value of velocity, in two-dimensional motion, speed is the absolute value of velocity. Well, since velocity is a vector, absolute value is magnitude, and that's the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Why does he keep driving this stuff home with us? Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, if you are taking an AP Calculus exam in May, it is very likely that one of the nine-point long answer questions is going to be about this stuff. So I really, 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 really want you to get it. Acceleration vectors, similar to velocity vectors, except we have the second derivative of position as each of the components. Um, while I'm at it, and just to make sure that we all have it written in our notes somewhere, arc length is an integral from one time to another time of speed. When we talk about distance traveled, distance traveled is an integral of speed. How am I doing so far? Good. Find velocity and acceleration vectors. for a particle with position vector cosine 2t sine 3t and let's do that when time is pi over 2. Let's do that. Want velocity and acceleration velocity and acceleration so the velocity vector is the vector whose components are the derivatives of the position components so the derivative of cosine 2t is negative 2 sine 2t and the derivative of sine 3t is 3 cosine 3t, I want that at pi over 2. So I've got to think to myself, sine of pi, sine of pi is 0. 
cosine of 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's 0. The velocity vector is the 0 vector. What does that mean? That means that the particle is at rest. The only way that a particle can be at rest is if both components of the velocity vector are zero. So if you're asked, when is this particle at rest, you set the derivative of x with respect to t equal to zero, the derivative of y with respect to t equal to zero. As for acceleration, acceleration is the vector whose components are the derivatives of those over there. So that's negative 4 cosine 2t and negative 9 sine 3t. So at time equals pi over 2, the acceleration vector is, well, cosine of pi is negative 1, so that's a 4. Sine of 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1. Got a 9. All right. All right. I'm going one more. I'm going one more. Let the velocity vector for this particular whatever it is be e to the t minus t, e to the t plus t on a time interval from 0 to 3. Now, what I have given you without overtly giving it to you, although I suppose I probably have overtly given it to you, is the derivative of x with respect to t and the derivative of y with respect to t in a very compact form. Uh, so, so, at time equals zero, the particle is at 2, negative 5. I want to know. Where is the particle at time equals 3? And I want to know uh, distance traveled on 0, 3. That's what I want to know. I want to know those two things, and we'll probably be done. So I want to know where the particle is at time equals 3. So I know how the x component is changing, and I know where the x values start. So when I go to figure out what that is, I know that the x value started at 2, and then, then there was some change dictated by this thing up here. So I've got to back up that from velocity to position. I need an integral from 0 to 3 of e to the t minus t dt. Because dx dt gives me the change in position. It gives me how position is changing. And so I want to find the total net change in position. So I integrate from 0, which is the time I know about, to 3, which is the time I don't know about. And that will give me the net displacement on the interval. So then if I'm looking for a change in y with respect to time applied to that thing, that's negative 5 plus integral negative 3 to 3 e to the t plus t dt. The calculator is going to be very, very helpful with us. This is 16.586 and 18.586. All right, now I want to know how far the particle traveled. If I want to know how far the particle traveled, I've got an integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. 
you have to be able to set up that integral. You have to be able to set up that integral. Integral square root of dx dt squared dy dt squared. You have to be able to do that. And the calculator does the work for you, 20.627. OK. OK. I'm going to keep hammering this drum, because those are things that we have to know over and over and over again. And when you come in a class tomorrow, I'm going to have old nine-point practice AP questions ready. There's, there's nothing uh, that we, we've got to do. We've just got to do it. We've got to know how to do this, and we're going to take opportunities to practice what we're doing in context. You've got to know. Okay, that's it. That's all. Till tomorrow.